we only have five senses to understand and perceive the world and we're limited to those five senses so it's like what does that really mean about reality i guess you know we talked a lot about reality before but like what does the five senses specifically mean and then if you even dive into each of the five senses like like vision for example you know our vision becomes more limited at night you know so we can only see a certain amount of things at night sometimes our mind is more likely to play tricks you know tricks on us at night um you can't perceive as much color at night because the the uh parts in the eyes that perceive the light waves that go into our eyes at night are just not as powerful as uh, the ones during the day mm-hmm. so even vision and like if you compare our species as human beings to other species on the on the planet other species can see because there's the light spectrum and it's limited you know of our vision but other animals can see past the light spectrum like in ultraviolet light i think some insects like bees right can see and more into the ultraviolet light so it's like that's interesting and dogs can yeah. hear better than we can hear it's it's pretty cool that you mentioned that because i was watching a, a video about this kid who he he was born blind but he developed almost like an eco eco sensor or something like that where he could ride a bike he could do normal things like anybody else would but he would do it through through the sound so his sound abilities actually developed much more than than normal people and so whenever uh for example they did this um exam where they put a piece of um like like let's say a pencil in the table and then they hit the table and he he had to uh like say where it was exactly the that the object was placed and it was really interesting because he like almost like 8 out of 10 or 9 out of 10 he would guess it right which kind of goes to show that uh sometimes we we might rely or balance out our 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 abilities or our senses that we have available when we are born and some of them grow more than others depending on our inclinations that we have right like for example uh this kid didn't have vision and so he relied on sound heavily to to really know where he was walking where he was going and so he really used sound to to know where he was at like which is autistic people develop a really high sense of like musical abilities right right and so they they they're able to perceive sound and at, at a different level i guess you know some yeah with autism yeah what you're talking about like it's um there well there's some theories that say they're over the the stimuli they have a hard time filtering it you know because naturally as human beings and that's actually tying to perception we um we filter all the stimuli that comes into us all the time 24 7 you know i guess when you're sleeping it's a little bit not as intense right but you have to filter that and it becomes uh what you call selective perception you know, you, you become selective in what you look at. You only focus on, I'm focusing on the screen right now, you know, stuff like that. Or, or I'm focusing on a book and I'm reading it. I'm tuning out uh, the air conditioner in the background. I'm tuning in your voice when you talk, my voice when I talk right now mm-hmm. in this moment, because that's selective perception. Now, for someone with autism, it might not be like that. It might be uh, through theory that they're talking about. Uh, the air conditioner is blaring, but the voices are blaring too. Like, imagine being in a classroom full of people talking, right? Everyone's voice is just as loud as everyone else's voice. It's all hitting you at once. And everything is hitting you at once. The senses of the table that your hands are on, the feet, your feet on the floor, the clothing on your body, the all the sights around you, all hitting you at one time. There's no, they can't, the theory is like, they can't selectively choose what to focus on one at a time. So it becomes overwhelming. And so there's a tendency for them to shut down and, and kind of, you know, maybe that's why they kind of, you know, kind of avoid eye contact. Maybe that's why there's, it's difficult to communicate with people with that, struggling with that, you know, because um, imagine everything blurring at once and you're trying to talk to them and they can't mm. hear your voice because all the other voices are just as loud. You know? Are we talking about then that our different limitations within our senses or lack of thereof limitations can cause 
you know, our consciousness to develop in different ways. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because, you know, like some people who are born blind, they don't know the world any other way except for not having vision. So, you know, it's interesting. I wonder, because I, I dabbled into a little bit of it with the near death experiences, people being born blind and then being able to have those. But then there's like interesting because I read a book somewhere where it's like someone who was born blind was still having dreams. And you wouldn't think someone who's blind can have dreams, but apparently it's possible. And I think they see different things. I can't remember exactly what it was. I think it was like strange colors or shapes. But you think about someone born blind, they've never perceived colors before. It leads me to this question that, you know, they can't see themselves then do they still care about their their self image? Do they still no. uh, someone get affected them. by the social culture of you know <laughs> wanting to look good? Wonder, it makes you wonder how that works with things like sexual selection and, and and then how like you said how they want to be perceived as attractive, but if they can't see themselves, then how can they know? Unless then then, then maybe 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 how they they feel an attraction or or have an attraction is more due to the the other person's voice or the other person's actions they rely rely more on what they're able to perceive right and they appreciate you know the person could be you know pretty or not but they appreciate more the fact that they're able to talk to them or they're being heard by someone or they're being touched by someone in a way that is healthy or happy you know and (laughs) for lack of better words <laughs> well i think all of this comes down to the huge philosophical question overwhelming this whole conversation is if our perceptions are biased if we're limited to five senses and even those five senses even that each individual one is limited compared to other animals on the planet and insects even which are so small compared to us yet they still can perceive more than we can in some ways and we can perceive more than they can in other ways. So what does that mean about reality? You know, because we depend on our five senses to perceive reality. So if our five senses are limited, the philosophical question is, does that mean our perceptions of reality are biased? And because every perception affects everything. But it's crazy is that perception is somewhat tied to judgment and to beliefs. And it's like social psychology with that sense. It's like our beliefs can affect the way we perceive reality, the way we perceive a conversation, even the way we perceive what we see in the room can be biased, you know, selective perception. They did an experiment where there's a...